Church, I, there, is, there is so much that we can talk about. If I were to give you an overview of what has happened this past year, listen to this. On an average Sunday morning, we have between 115 and 135 children from infants through fifth grade. We average about 30 to 40 adults and teens serving on a Sunday. Our nurseries, headed up by Krista Brassard, have provided safe environments where our youngest family members can begin to see God through shepherds' words and actions. Even though there have been crocodile tears, poopy diapers, potty training successes and failures, and epic toy feuding, the smiles, hugs, laughter, and learning about God and his love for us have been highlights this year. Our pre-K and kindergarten, headed up by a small army of shepherds, have been teaching our little ones about God's love for us and God's plan for us. They've worked through the sections of the Bible at 9 a.m. And during 1045, they began the gospel project this past fall and walked through the books of Genesis through Judges. All this has been done through Bible stories, puppet dramas, videos, crafts, snacks, circle prayers, and singing songs. The elementary ministry on a Sunday morning, headed up by a dedicated group of adults and teens, have been teaching our first through fifth graders the Bible by means of the gospel gospel project, a four-year plan to walk children through the Bible from Genesis to Revelation with the goal of seeing how God's story points to the saving grace of Jesus Christ so that the creator can have a right relationship with his creation. In other words, teaching them the foundational building blocks of faith through understanding the Bible's big story and rich history. They played games, got messy, did a thousand and one competitions and relays. They worshiped with videos and emotions, prayed for each other and laughed so hard that they had to wipe away tears. Wednesday night, we just finished our 13th year of Awana and God continues to bless. There were 153 clubbers registered over the course of the year. We averaged just over 100 clubbers every Wednesday. 20 visitors attended throughout the year. Nine new families got involved in Awana that have never been in Awana before. Hundreds of verses of the books of the Bible were memorized and planted firmly in hearts. Over 78 adults and teens served faithfully. Some events included prepping for the light, the night, Halloween outreach, a Christmas parties, pajama and superhero night, epic Awana stores, and a roller skating night where we packed out the Gretna roller rink. Many seeds were planted and roots were deepened in our children throughout the year. Sunday a.m. and Wednesday p.m. might have been the focus of kids' ministry, but there's been extra things like this. Last summer, we had our second year of our elementary missions trip called the 30 plus hour servathon as an introductory missions trip for older elementary. It's got a new name now. It's called Kids on Mission. And online registration is now open for elementary kids who've completed third through fifth grade. We did a fall jam overnighter connection in the fall time. The elementary joined the choir during the Christmas program and the pre-K and K rang those bells with their hearts. The winter jam connection event we had, the winter blast at Camp Orchard Hill, 21 fourth and fifth graders went, seven shepherds. We dedicated this past year, 19 children over the course of nine families. We digitized our monthly shepherd trainings through videos and equipping nights. We started digital parenting videos to help out. We do quarterly shepherd appreciation Sundays. Since February, we've been helping transition our fifth graders to the next stage of life as middle schoolers. And what's to come this summer? We have a lot to do. The great jungle journey is coming and we have that slide up there. Over 120 kids, 120 kids are already registered and we expect to climb well over 200 by the time we get there in June. The focus is an epic cruise from Genesis to Revelation explaining the seven C's like ABC, creation, corruption, catastrophe, confusion, Christ, the cross and consummation. Be here for night five when we explain that to children. But that's where everything, like, it all gets put back by God, okay? The summer kickoff party to usher in the new season. Thursday connect time, water slides, lunch, Bible stories, games, kids on missions trip. A summer clothes party with a huge inflatable water slide. Child dedications in August. The official move up Sunday is going to be August 25th. <gasps> There's a lot we do. But please let me remind you. We don't pack the schedule. We don't say numbers just because we want to inflate ourselves up. We are strategic in what we do at this church. We are strategic within our kids' harvest. And everything we do has to have a purpose to connect kids, to let them understand who Jesus is, to grow our leaders, to help encourage our families. Everything we do is for God's glory. It's all because we want to develop and nurture young hearts for Jesus. Now, our children are faith watchers. And you might be thinking, Pastor Darrell, it's 10 o'clock and you haven't even gotten to your message yet. I started the message after announcements. We're just getting to the best part of the message now, okay? It brings us to Romans. Church, we've been walking through Romans for 
a good number of months now. And God laid this, this thought on my heart a while ago, the fact that our children are faith watchers. And there are two verses that have just really impacted me in the book of Romans so far. And I want to share them with you now. And then start getting out your Play-Doh. We're going to play with some Play-Doh here in a second. Romans 1, 16 and 17 say this, for I'm not ashamed of this good news about Christ. It is the power of God at work, saving everyone who believes, the Jew first and also the Gentile. The good news tells us how God makes us right in his sight. This is accomplished from start to finish by faith. As the scripture says, it is through faith that a righteous person has life. And the other passage that has just been impacting to me is Romans 15, 13. And Paul says these words, I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in him. Then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, I want you to take out your Play-Doh and I want you to start kind of holding it in your hands, just kind of making it soft and pliable. You know, Paul was a missionary who uh, traveled from town to town once he met God and kind of got on the right path with Jesus. And his goal was simple. He wanted to just preach the good news. He speaks of this in Romans when he's speaking to the believers of the Roman church. I'm not ashamed of this gospel. This is power, my friends. This gospel, it tells how we can be right with God. And as he traveled from town to town, he knew his mission. He wanted to see lives transformed for the glory of God. Some locations took to his message and others didn't. Paul wasn't ashamed. He believed God and he used it to transform himself. We can believe God to transform ourselves. You know, if we truly allow God to take hold of our lives, if we, if we want to be honest and say, okay, I, I've, I've heard this transformation thing for a couple months now. If we truly say we want to be transformed, then it's kind of like we are Play-Doh in God's hands and we want to be soft and moldable because the creator wants to create us. He wants to use us, our gifts and skills and talents to spread the good news everywhere we go, right? And you can feel that in the Play-Doh when you get nice, fresh, new Play-Doh. Now, take your Play-Doh and just put it back in your container a second, okay? Don't worry, you'll get it out again to play with. It's Kids Harvest Sunday. We're playing with Play-Doh. This is great, right? Have you ever found Play-Doh in your house? And the lid's halfway off. Uh, what happens to Play-Doh? It gets hard. It, get, it doesn't get soft and moldable, and pli- right? It gets hard. Well, here's our first point. My friends, our, transform- our transformative faith journey is going to be filled with challenges. Our, transform- our transformative faith journey will be filled with challenges. You see, if we try to do life, with the lid halfway off, we're going to dry out. We're not going to be soft and moldable and pliable anymore. And it's hard because you don't want to play with Play-Doh that's, that's hard, right? And my friends, Paul's life was not easy. He's not saying, I'm not ashamed for the gospel. Life's going to be a cinch. It's going to be super easy if you just follow me. In actuality, it's probably going to be really hard because challenges are coming. And if we don't rest in God's perfect peace. We can't stay soft and moldable. You see, if we try to start doing life our own way and we kind of say, well, I'm done. I'm just going to play over there. I'm not going to be in God's presence. We get hard. My friends, there are some of us here today who just might be hard right now. Life has been hard because our transformative faith journey is going to be filled with challenges. In the sealed container, the Play-Doh stays moist. Now, is it possible to make hard Play-Doh soft again? Yes, you're right. Okay. Listen, I even, I even Googled it to find out. Okay. Actually you can, but it's a process. You have to slowly put water back into the Play-Doh. 
You have to smush it out and put some water in and fold it over and smush it out and fold it over. And eventually you can make hard, unsoft Play-Doh soft again. Sometimes we're that hard Play-Doh and, and God needs to do a work in our heart to make us soft again. My friends, no matter where you're at, God is good. He knows where you're at and he wants you to be soft and pliable. He wants you to be able to walk and be transformed in your faith journey. Now, take your Play-Doh out again. And now I want you to attempt to make something with it. All right. You can make whatever you want. Just be creative. Okay. You can make something with it. And sometimes you'll find when you're making something with your Play-Doh, it doesn't come out exactly how you hoped or wished. You might be that kind of person that just throws it away and says, I give up. You might be that kind of person that says, nope, it's not right. But listen, our second point is this. God desires authenticity and not perfection. God desires authenticity, not perfection. You can try to make something and it might not be perfect, but he just wants it to be something you made because he loves you because you have gifts and talents and skills. We can't be perfect. It's impossible to be perfect, but we have a God who loves us, who wants to work with us where we're at, as long as we're willing to be open and humble and teachable and transformative. He wants, Paul wants his readers to experience joy and peace because of the trust in God and we can trust in a God that doesn't want perfection. God really, it, perfection is pretty much impossible. He just wants us to be authentic. He wants us to be real. Now, show your Play-Doh creation to your neighbor, all right? Show it to your neighbor, tell them what you did, okay? And then in response, you can respond and say, that's fantastic, you did a good job, right? And if they say something to the effect of, well, no, it's not really what I wanted, to, well, then try harder, but encourage them, okay? Now, why do I have you doing that with your Play-Doh? Because my friends, this is what we need to do. Why? Because our children are listening and watching everything we do and say. Our children are listening and watching everything we do and say. And that is so important that God has impressed it on my heart that if we are doing something or saying something, our kids are watching us. So here's a question. What are we doing in front of our children? What are we saying in front of our children? Take the past week, the past month, the past season of life. How have you molded your faith for them? Are they seeing you being transformative? Are they seeing your transformation? And my friends, it is okay to mess up. I can't tell you even this past week, probably even today, yes, today, how I have already messed up. God doesn't want perfection. He wants us to be authentic, but he wants to see that we desire to be transformed. And that means that we keep taking steps forward. And that hope and joy and peace, that power that comes from the Holy Spirit that Paul talks about in Romans, just fills us and gives us this uber confidence to keep moving forward. And our kids need to see this because they are like sponges soaking everything up. They're listening and watching to everything we do and say. It's the good news, the power of God at work, saving everyone who believes. His Holy Spirit gives us this confident hope that we can point to Jesus. So here's a question. Here's some homework. The last point, I will be an example that points blank to Jesus. I will be an example that points blank to Jesus. I want you to think and pray about who do you need to write on that line? Maybe there's someone in your life that you need to be an example to that points them to Jesus. Maybe it's your kids, your spouse, a friend, a coworker, a neighbor. God wants us to be walking with him. He wants us to be transformers. He wants us to be, to have a transformational faith. And it is not so that we get glory. 
It is not so that people pat us on the back and say, good job to us. It is so that we can simply put a smile on God's face. And my friends, that's what we try to do in kids harvest. We try to point children to Jesus. We want to develop and nurture these young hearts for God. And I'm going to ask the last part of the, the uh, study guide in your bulletin are some prayer points for kids harvest. And really quickly, we're going to walk through them. And there's four prayer points and I'm going to ask you to start praying for kids harvest. And they're this number one, pray for children to accept Jesus as their savior and begin to grow strong roots. My friends, it is tough to be a kid out there and it just gets tougher, especially with the access to technology that we have. I know it. I'm in the trenches. My kids deal with it, but we need to pray that they accept Jesus and their savior and begin to grow strong roots in their relationship with him. Number two, pray for parents to disciple their children in a way that honors God. And parents, we are not perfect. God does not want perfection. He wants authenticity. And that means sometimes when you've messed up, you just got to say sorry to your kids. They need to see that because why they're watching everything we say and do. They are faith watchers. So pray for parents to disciple children in a way that honors God. Three, pray for our shepherds who connect and build into kids and their families within kids harvest. These teenagers and adults just give and give and give. And every now and then we, we appreciate them. But, but you know what? God knows what they're doing. And I know that they're building treasures in heaven because of how they give and serve faithful. And we're so thankful, but pray for our shepherds. And finally, pray for our continued ability to reach out into the areas of life and impact children and families for the sake of the gospel that transforms. We want to continue to reach out. We're not about making kids harvest a household name. It's just the name of our ministry because we're in Lebanon County and people kind of identify with farming stuff, right? It's an easy way to think about why we do what we do. But please pray for those things in kids harvest. I'm going to invite the worship team to come up. We're going to close in worship with a beautiful song called the blessing. And my hope and my prayer is that as you walk out today, that you just understand what a beautiful person God has created in you. What a beautiful church family that we're a part of. And again, I love the fact that God has just laid on this church's heart, the heartbeat of pouring into the next generation because our children are faith watchers. They're watching us. So everything we say and do, we want to point them to Jesus. Will you pray with me? Heavenly father, I pray, Jesus, that you would just continue speaking to us here in this moment. God, you're so good. You want us to live a transformational faith. And God, it gets hard sometimes. Sometimes we get hard like hard Play-Doh. And Lord, you want us to be soft and moldable and pliable. And Lord, speak to our hearts. Help our children understand that you're a good God and you want us to pour into them. I thank you so much for being part of a church that loves kids, that wants to see them grow in their faith. And God, we just ask that you bless the kids ministry, the shepherds, the parents, this church for your glory and your honor. We just simply want to put a smile on your face. It is in the powerful name of King Jesus we pray. Amen. My friends. May God bless you. May he bless you as you walk out of this room because you're going to go into life and I don't know what it's going to hold for you this week, but I do know this. God goes with you. He goes before you. He is on the side of you and he is behind you and he wants to bless you. Let us continue to be a church that is about transformation. Let us continue to be a church that pours into the next generation. I thank you so much for your faithful support of Kids Harvest. As you leave, please make sure you check out the volunteer drive. If you haven't signed up, maybe there's a spot. No, not maybe. There is a spot for you, okay? And after church, I know it's a nine o'clock service. 
But we've got a great, like, fun social after 1045 with sandwiches that are, like, really good. So, like, stay for that if you want. But church, thank you so much. Let me just close with this. Romans 15, 13. In my notes, if I can turn my page, says this. I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in him. Then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Take that Plato home. Continue being soft, moldable, and pliable. Church are dismissed. Be blessed.